Okay, it's June 6th today, is that right? Uh, this is your uh, review of fractions, decimals, and percents. There's 20 questions. Follow along. Uh, if there are questions you just couldn't do, please just watch this video and fast forward the parts you don't know how to do. Ignore the ones you do know how to do. Just go find out the ones you can't do. So the first question says, what percent does this picture represent? Keeping in mind that if it was the full square, that would represent 100% of something. So here we have 1, one 2, 3, 4, 5%. And we have 12 hundredths of a percent. Okay? We don't have 12%. That's Some people think this is being 12%, but it's not. So what we really have is 5 and... 12 hundredths of a percent, or 5 and 6 fiftieths of a percent, or 5 and 3 twenty-fifths of a percent, because all of those fractions are equivalent. There is one other way you could define it, and that's as a decimal, which would be 5 and 12 hundredths of a percent. So this and this are really the answers that we're looking for. But if you have this or this, you also have it correct. Question two um, says, what percent does this picture represent? So rather than count the, the dark squares, I'm going to count the light squares because there's less of them. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 full squares, which means at a part one. So that means there must be 76 dark squares and a third uh, of a square, which means it's 76 and a third percent, or 76 decimal three repeating percent. Oh, is it 77? It's 76, isn't it? It is 76. Y'all crazy. 76. Uh, because there are 33 white squares, there must be 76 dark squares. That's 99 squares. And then the 100th square would be the partial one, right? So if you had 77 and a third percent, uh, I'm feeling generous today. You can have it correct. Yes. Don't worry about it. It's okay. It just means you have to take the X and make it into a check mark. It's okay. Everything will work. Question three, which decimal does this represent? So it is less than 1%. This is less than 1%. And in fact... It's a quarter of a percent. Okay, it's a quarter of a percent, or more importantly, a quarter of a percent. But this is not the answer we're looking for. It says what decimal does this represent, not what percent. So because it is a quarter of a percent, we have to think of it as being a fraction out of 100. So a quarter of a percent would be decimal 25 out of 100, or as an equivalent fraction, it would be 25 over 10,000. We would multiply both numerator and denominator by 100 to get rid of the decimal. And once we read it, it's 25 ten thousandths, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. So the answer we're looking for is 0 decimal 0025. That is a quarter of a percent has a decimal. If they missed a zero, give them half a point for niceness. If they're missing one zero here, no, I don't. You forget it. It's wrong. Never mind. No part marks. I'm cruel. It's wrong. It's not right. Question four, which fraction does this picture represent? So again, we're not looking for percentage this time. We're looking for a fraction. So there are 19 full darkened circles, or squares, excuse me, and a half. So this represents 19.5% or 19.5%. That's a percentage, not a fraction. As a fraction, technically this is right. But we already said that you can't have fractions with decimals in the numerator. We want to have uh, decimals gone. So if you multiply it by 10, and by 10, the actual equivalent fraction that I wanted you to express was 195 over 1,000. However, if you had 19.5 out of 100, you will get half a mark, because it's technically a fraction. 
but the one you need to express would be the one that does not have a decimal in the numerator. Okay, your next question. What is 0.2% as a fraction in lowest terms? So because it's a percentage, we know that as a fraction it's going to be out of 100. So 0.2 out of 100 would be 0.2%. But as a equivalent fraction, we would have it as 2 out of 1,000. But that's not lowest terms. In lowest terms, we would have 1 out of 500. Now, if they do have 2 out of 1,000, you could say that's half a mark because obviously... Okay, back to teaching, not correcting. Here we go. What is 0 0.045 as a percent? So the first thing you needed to do was write this or read it as 45 thousandths. You have to know your place. This is the tenth, this is the hundredth, this is the thousandth. Once you have 45 thousandths, it's easy to write as a fraction. And if you want to get it as a percent, you just need an equivalent fraction with 100 as a denominator. And the equivalent fraction here would be 4.5 out of 100, which means the answer I'm looking for is 4.5%. The next question, what is 8% as a fraction in lowest terms? So 8% as a simple fraction is simply 8 out of 100. That's easy. But in lowest terms, both are divisible by 4 to give you 2 out of 25. If they had 4 out of 50, that's a half point. If they had 8 out of 100, that's a half point. But if you had 2 out of 25, you get the full point. Question 8, what is 0.6? So what is 0.6 as a percent? So again, it's 6 tenths, which lends itself lovely to a fraction. And as a percent, as an equivalent fraction out of 100, it's this, which means 0.6 is 60%. 6 tenths is 60%. Question 9 says, Jimmy gets commission. And commission is a uh, percentage that a seller gets to keep if they sell a product. In this case, it's selling a car. So he gets to keep 4 and 3 quarters uh, for himself. So the first thing we want to do is think of four and three quarters percent really as being this, then as being this, then as being this. And the reason why we want to do that is because then I know that four and four and three quarters percent is as a decimal, zero decimal zero four seven five. And when we want to figure out percentage of twenty four thousand, we realize that. We can multiply those two together to get the actual value. Take my calculator and go four and three quarters percent of 24,000 is $1,140. So if he gets four and three quarters percent commission, he will make $1,140 for himself. Question 10, Willard borrowed $2 from his, $200 from his daughter, Maddie, at a weekly interest rate of 12.5%. How much interest is there after one week? So again, same process as the last question. 12.5%, still 12.5%, still 12.5%. We multiply that by the loan of $200. The amount of interest that would be there 12 and, oh, sorry, let's just do it the proper way. So 12.5%, oh, that's not right. 12.5% of $200 means that interest-wise, I would owe Maddie $25 interest after week one, which means after one week, I would have to repay Maddie $225, right? The next question says, if the interest and in loan Willard owes goes unpaid for three weeks, how much will, in total, Willard pay at the end of three weeks in principal, meaning what he borrowed, and interest. So we already know after week one, Willard would owe $225. So for week two, he would owe 12.5% of the $225 in interest plus the principal. So we could do one of two ways. We could either multiply 
225 by 12.5 to get the interest, which was $28.125, or roughly $28.13. Or a better way would be to take 112.5%, because the 100% is the principal, the 12.5% is the interest. If I find this for that, I actually get the total I owe Maddie after week two, which would be $253.13. That's after week two. Now, week three, I owe her an additional 12.5% interest on the $253.13. So rather than count 12.5%, find the interest, and then add it back to the 253, I'm going to find 100 and 12.5% of the 253.13. And that will tell me that at the end of week three, I owe my daughter $284.77 approximately. Now, if you had $284 in anything, uh, that's right. That's okay. Because the variation might have been, if you didn't round here and you kept it as this, um, it would change the, the numbers a little bit. Yeah, I know. But $284 in any sense, that's fine. $284. $284. No, the answer is 284.77. Okay. Your next question. Jack invested $400 in Microsoft. Now, investing means you buy a share of the company. So when you buy a stock, you're actually buying a part of the company. You have ownership in the company. After three weeks, the stocks rose 120% of the original value. What is the new value of Jack's stocks? So really, we're looking for 120% of the $400 he invested. 120% is 120 out of 100, which is 1 and 20 hundredths, which is 1 and 2 tenths, which is 1 and 2 tenths of $400. So if I take the $400 or the 120% of the $400, his stock is now worth 480 bucks. He really made 20% interest or 20% uh, equity on the stock. Question 13 says, uh, an $80 pair of pants is on sale at loudmouth.com for 20% off. After two weeks, they decided to reduce the sale price a further 15%. What is the new sale price? So, again, there's two ways to do this. I could calculate 20% of $80. That would be the discount. I would subtract that discount from $80, and that would be the new price. I prefer to do it this way. If this is the price of pants, this is the $80. If there's a 20% discount, I could calculate that and subtract it from $80. Or I know that if there's a 20% discount, I'm paying for 80% of the pants. So I'm going to calculate not 20%. I don't want to calculate the discount. I want to calculate what I pay for. So 80% of $80 is $64. So after the first week, the price of those pants is $64. But then they decide to take those $64 pants, which were on sale, and discount them a further 15%, which means I'm going to pay for 85% of the $64, which means... At the end of two weeks, those pants are going to cost me $54.40. Question 14. A $40 item is charged a tariff, which is a border tax, of 25%. And then the new price is then taxed at a rate of 15% extra. What is the final price of the item? So in this case, if this is our $40 item, if it has a tariff of 25% added on to it, I'm going to pay for the 100% of the item plus an additional 25% tariff, which means I'm charged 125% of the $40. 125% is 1.25. So when I multiply that out, 125% of the $40 item 
would mean after the tariff is imposed, it's now $50. And that $50 item now has a 15% tax added onto it. So it was $50 plus the 15%. So 115% of the $50 tariffed item. The final price for that item is $57.50. Question 15, Michelle wrote a social studies test and got 46.25. That obviously is not my wife because she's much smarter than that. If the test was out of 80, how many questions did she get right? Now it says, hint, use proportional reasoning. And you don't have to, but it works really well in this case. So 46.25 out of 100 would be proportional to or equal to how many out of 80, okay? So when I set it up this way, our experience says that I can now create an algebraic equation, 100x equals the product of 80 and 46.25. So the product of 80 and 46.25 is 3,700. Divide by your coefficient. Knock the two zeros off here. X will equal 37. So therefore, Michelle got, therefore, Michelle got, 37 out of 80 on her test. 37. Question 16 is your true false. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. A quarter of a percent is not equal to 0 decimal 25 because that would be 25%. A quarter percent, if you were changing it to a correct answer, is this decimal, right? A quarter of a percent. Question 17, 0.2% is less than 1. Well, 1 is a tricky question, actually. I should have made this a little bit different um, because 1 is really 100%, right? It's not 1%, it's 100%. So is 0.2% less than 100%? Absolutely. So therefore, your answer is true. Question 18, half of half of half is 12.5%. So if I have 100% and I take half of it, that's half of half is right there. Half of half of half. So half of half is 25%. And half of that is half of 25%, which is 12.5%. So therefore, your answer is true. Question 19, if you get a tenth of a percent annual interest on your savings account, a balance of $100 will be worth $100.10 after one year. So let's just figure this out. A tenth of a percent. A tenth of a percent is the same thing as this, which is the same thing as this, which is the same thing as this, which is the same thing as this. So if I take my $100 and I find a tenth of a percent of that with my calculator. I can do this mentally, but I'll do it with the calculator. My interest rate will be a dime. I will make a dime interest, which means this is true. After a year, my investment will be worth $100.10. And finally, question 20. 10% of $60, which is $6, it is more money than 13.5% of $50. So really, I have to figure out this one here. 13.5% of $50 would be this expression. 13.5% of $50 is $6.75. So therefore, the answer we were looking for for 20 is false. It is not more money. 